1957, Felix Wankel completed his first working prototype of the rotary engine. Unlike standard internal combustion engines, the rotary engine converted pressure into a rotational motion instead of the traditional reciprocating piston motion. This allowed a rotary engine to be smaller in size, lighter in weight, and happier to rev than a traditional engine. The rotary engine peaked in 1991 when Mazda's 787B prototype became the first Japanese car to win the 24 hours of Le Mans using this engine configuration. The following year, Mazda dropped arguably the best rotary powered car ever, the RX-7 Twin Turbo, chassis code FD. This particular example is extremely clean, extremely fast, and extremely loud. And we've selected it because it features some of the most common modifications that owners do to these cars to improve performance. My name is Armin Pazeshian. My car is a 93 RX-7. Well, the RX-7 is uh, it's kind of a purist car, you know? It was designed to be kind of a a race car for the track, and that's what kind of drew me to it. I've had this RX-7 for nine years. I bought it in a very pristine condition, low mileage. I didn't really know what direction the car was gonna go into. Um, slowly I began building it to be a track car, and that's where everything kind of took off. We begin with the traditional setup. This is a FD RX-7. Has a rotary up front with a single turbo conversion. Popular mod for these cars. Pretty big turbo, pretty high winding motor, and very loud. I uh, changed the turbo, went to single turbo, which kind of simplifies everything. When the RX-7 came out in 93, it had a sequential twin turbo system that was very complicated. It worked well, but it also had a lot of uh, faults to it with its complicated vacuum line system and whatnot. Also, when the second turbo came on around 4500 RPM, it kind of made power delivery a little difficult sometimes if you're not experienced driving it hard. When you switch to a single turbo, the power band becomes a little more linear and you can make more power running the same boost as you did with, with the twin turbos. As a track-oriented car, there are really no drawbacks. It runs cooler, the exhaust temps are lower, it's more reliable, you don't have to deal with you know, chronic solenoids or vacuum lines breaking on you. It's, just, it's all simple. This is a really neat car. It's, it's balanced well, it's uh, smooth, it's well behaved for a tuner car. Everything works. Uh, it doesn't run hot. Temperature gauge is right in the middle. It doesn't have any quirks, really. Um, because the rotating mass of the engine isn't all that much, it's really friendly towards shifting, too. It's really hard to, to screw up a, a shift or a clutch drop in this car. It's only 2,900 pounds. Very balanced through the corners, actually. The first thing you notice about driving one of these is that it actually drives, feels, and looks like a much newer car. Uh, you wouldn't think this is a 22-year-old car uh, to get in it and drive it. My favorite thing about the RX-7 is its total balance. You know, it's a car that handles well, brakes well, it goes, it looks nice, it has that kind of classic British car style to it that you don't really see anymore. For an old car that was built in the 90s, it's very competitive as far as, you know, as a, as a race car goes. And it's, uh, you know, it's timeless style, you know, it's, it's never gonna look, it's never gonna look dated. The price is already going up, kind of like Porsches, it's kind of going in that direction. So we'll see what, uh, what time does for us. Most people, unfortunately, are pretty clueless about rotaries. I'm not trying to say they are as reliable as a piston engine, but they can also be a lot more reliable than what people make them out to be. I've had this car for nine years. I've tracked it for seven years hard. Um, countless track days, drag strip days, and uh, I've never blown an engine. So it just shows that tuning is the most important thing. If you tune the car right, it should last. But I, I, I still don't really get this engine. I don't. Someone needs to explain to me why it's better, other than because it's different. Is an engine better if it can rev higher, but if that's what you have to do? You see, most people like me will say, well, you have to wind it out, and RX-7 people will say, no, it means you get to wind it out. There, there's two different schools of thought. 
Neither is necessarily right or wrong. Or are they? The only way to find out is going to be to see what happens when you put a V8 in it. My name is Daniel McClelland. I drive a 1994 RX-7 and it has an LS2 V8 engine in it. I grew up in a drag racing family. The small block Chevrolet engine was always a very important engine. Uh, I wanted to build a car with an LS2. We also had a 2003 Miata at the time. Really enjoyed driving that car. And I researched it, found the RX-7 swaps, and it just seemed like a great idea. So what happens when you stick an LS motor under the hood of one of these things? Well, changes the weight balance a little bit. There's a little bit of extra weight in the nose, and there's a little bit of extra weight in the middle, too, because the T56 gearbox is a bit heavier. But you gain over 100 foot-pounds of torque at a lower RPM. So whereas the rotary, I'm winding the snot out of it all the time, I can kind of enjoy the punchy mid-range of the LS and drive a bit more relaxed. The entire car is basically what I call a mechanical restoration. So every part has been out and either replaced, upgraded, or just improved in general. The rear end has been rebuilt with a stronger differential. Uh, the suspension and brakes have been upgraded to accommodate the extra power. Uh, just make sure it's mechanically working well. Aesthetically, I wanted to keep the car as stock as possible with a couple little accents here and there. So really the car is about 95% stock appearing. I've added a Shine Auto diffuser in the back as well as a lift spoiler. It sounds pretty beasty. I mean, I get a lot of engine noise, not just exhaust. In fact, the exhaust is pretty quiet. But when you put your foot in it, I mean, there's, there's no question that the V8 car is faster than the rotary car. It, it just is. Even though the speed differentials through the corners might be in slight favor of the rotary, the speeds on the straightaway, I think, more than make up for it with the V8. It's so funny. Not that I recommend driving with your eyes closed, but if you had your eyes closed, you would absolutely think you were in a Corvette. It's unbelievable how much they've made this car feel like a Corvette. My biggest piece of advice for anybody that's going to undertake one of these swaps is to start with first the nicest rolling car that you can find, the most complete vehicle. And also I was able to purchase a complete crash GTO uh, to get the engine and transmission out of. You get all of the electronics, all the computer, the wiring harness, and I've used countless small bits and pieces that people don't normally have to do these swaps. Could we have possibly found two more similar cars for this comparison? These cars are one year apart. They have within 10,000 miles of each other. They have the same wheels, similar tires, similar suspension setups. And so all we're really looking at is the driveline. What you lose by having an LS in here is that the T56 gearbox, although the shifts are direct and, and firm, it's just not as much of a joy to row as the standard gearbox. The clutch isn't as easy because the rotating mass of a six liter V8, it, there's just more to it. So if you don't get your clutch timing perfect, you end up kind of bucking the car a little bit. This all brings us back to the question, would the RX-7 have been better with a different engine? It depends on your priorities. For instance, the V8 car is faster, the V8 car is more refined, the V8 car has more torque coming out of corners, so you don't have to work as hard to get the most out of it. And the V8 is significantly more fuel efficient. During the exact same conditions, it used less than half as much fuel as the rotary car. On the other hand, the rotary turns in better, feels lighter in the nose, has better steering feel, and keeps the underdog spirit of Felix Wankel's engine alive. The rotary engine certainly isn't better than the piston engine in any objective way, but it is different, and for some people, that's enough.